Back in 1970, there was a movie called The Landlord. I saw it a long time ago when I was in my teens or 20s. I can't remember, but I did see it a very long time ago. Perhaps you might have seen it too. It stars Bo Bridges. He's this white man who becomes the landlord uh, to this housing tenement in a predominantly black neighborhood. As the film progresses, he gets into a relationship with a mixed race dancer. Um, and he also has an affair with this black woman played by Diana Sands, who you might have seen in a couple of movies. She died in the early 70s of ammonia, I believe, or cancer, something like that. Uh, he gets her pregnant. She is the girlfriend of a black activist played by Louis Gossett Jr. And when he finds out that this white man impregnated his black girlfriend, he, tr he tries to kill him but ultimately stops. And um, these are the particular types of storylines that I've continued to see throughout this generation now. And when you have scripts where you have these men of the dominant society impregnating our women and taking them away from our men... That is very troubling, just as black women do not like to see black men being taken away from them by non-black women. Now, I'm going to tell you something before I go on with this video. Like I've said before, I probably mentioned it before in another video. When black women are telling black men or telling other black women they don't really give a shit that black men are dating white women, that's a lie. Because if they didn't care, they wouldn't be bitching about it. They wouldn't even be making videos about it. They wouldn't be upset about it. So when I when I hear the fact that black they say black women don't care that black men are dating out, that's a lie. Black women give a fuck when black men are not dating them and black men are not marrying them, or they would not bitch and moan and complain about it. And the same can be said with black men, because they will complain, bitch and moan and whine, just like the women, when they see their women with non black men. So I wish you people would stop lying to yourselves and lying to each other because I can see right through you. You're like an open book, but let's move on with this video. Now, I want to come on down here really quick. Don't worry, guys. I'm going to get rid of this real quick. I know my camera's shaking. I'm trying to hold it steady, but the film didn't do that well at all. Most of these films that tackle, you know, racial tension and stuff like that do pretty decent. But when it comes to the relationships of black women and white men or black men and white women together in relationships on screen, they tend to fail at the box office. That's been the case back in the day. That's been the case now in our present day. The thing that has gotten me when I was looking at this particular um, critical reaction here. If you look right here, you can see it says on September 19, 2007, journalist Mike Hale discussed the film in a New York Times article called Before Gentric Gentrification Was Cool, It Was a Movie. Hale praised the film for tackling the racial tension that arose in the aftermath of Martin Luther King Jr.'s death and wrote in surprise how the film would disappear after its 1970 release, rarely shown and just as rarely discussed because nobody really gives a fuck about the film. And to me, a white man being, you know, the, uh, the housing uh, tenements landlord, that's nothing new, but getting involved in impregnating a black woman I, I'm not I'm not feeling that and many people are not feeling that at all especially in the black community but here's what really gets me about what I just wrote sorry about the shade camera trying to hold the study so please stop bitching and moaning this shit right here is troubling in a New York Times article called before gentrica gentrification was cool it was a movie when was gentrification ever ever cool when was it ever cool I would really like to know why you think gentrification is cool and you say gentrification was cool before it was cool it was a movie. Gentrification was never cool. The only good thing about gentrification is that it improves the areas of these low income areas. Okay, It makes it more bustling. It makes it more of a booming business. But black people should be doing it on their own and not getting any help from outsiders. You look at the definition of gentrification, you can see it's a general term for the arrival of wealthier people. Now, when we say wealthier people, what do we think about when we hear the word wealthier? We think of white people, right? We do have wealthy black people, but they're the 1%, right? So when we hear the word gentrification, we usually, and you're thinking of this term wealthier, you, you're going to see white people comes to mind, right? A general term for the arrival of wealthier people in existing urban districts. A related increase in rents and property values and changes in districts, character, and culture. The term is often used negatively, suggesting the displacement of poor communities by rich outsiders. 
why would it be used positively when that is the majority of what this means right here? If you look at it, the answer is right here in the definition. Wealthier people, that's people that don't look like you and me, black people, okay? The, the, that's the so-called dominant society. In the existing urban district, that means where bl mostly blacks and Hispanics live, okay? You're going to increase the rent where these urban people live, and by increasing the rent and the property values, if you increase the rent for these urban people who don't make that much money as wealthier people do, what's going to happen to the people who have been here before these wealthier people moved in? The people who have been here before that time are going to move out because they don't have the money to pay for the high rent cost and the property values that have been entailed on them. Changes in the district's character, meaning that it won't be the way it used to be. So if you got a predominantly black area, so to speak, you got a bunch of black people around and stuff like that, it's not going to be a black area for much longer because now you've got people that have wealthier people, I should say, with more money than the people who originally lived there coming in. They're going to change things, and the culture is definitely going to change as well. That is exactly what has happened to Harlem. Now, when I was in Harlem as a child in the 80s, Harlem was a horrible place to go to. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There were crackheads on the street in the daylight. It didn't matter what time of day it was. There were crackheads out there all the time. I didn't like going down there to visit my father because he was living down there at the time with my uncles who were now deceased on his side. And every time I had to go in there and see him because I wanted to see my dad, I told my mother that I wanted to go home at a certain time because I was afraid if we left late that we'd be in trouble. So we would usually get down there on a Saturday or something like that. We'll go like 12 o'clock in the afternoon and leave around 4 or 5 before it gets dark. Now, if it happened to be like October or something like that, we probably wouldn't even stay only about maybe two or three hours and go home. But, I mean, that's the perfect example of gentrification is what happens in Harlem. Now, you can say it's a good thing for be gentrified when it, when it comes to like more businesses moving in. But at the same time, these businesses that are moving in are not black businesses. These are businesses from... You know, coming from outsiders, and we're giving them our money in our communities. We literally have white people that are living in Harlem right now who are afraid to go to Harlem back in the day because of how it was, but now they're actually occupying Harlem. And a lot of the people who lived there a long time ago, even if they weren't even bad people that were committing criminal acts or anything, they have been taken out because they can simply not pay the rent. Even in a game like Saints Row 2, they had a scene where there was a white corporation, you know, trying to remove all the riffraff and all the criminals out of the community so they can get the richer white folks into the community. And if they had to kill them, they would do that too. I know it's a video game, but this is the same concept, the same thing. Now you take a look at this. This is the answer to some people's frustrations when it comes to this gentrification thing. They can't stand it. If somebody's complaining about the camera, then you try holding the goddamn camera while you're talking because I'm sick of people complaining about my camera. And it's not many people, but some people complain, complain about my camera when I'm trying to hold the camera and talk at the same time. It's hard. I'm doing the best I can not to shake while my mouth is moving. moving excuse me. But this is what gentrification really is, and this is what a lot of people feel when it comes to gentrification. Gentrify this, and that's a nice way of saying go fuck yourself or get the fuck out of here. Because even though there are businesses moving in and there is money coming into the community, the money should be coming into the community already from its own people. We should stop sending money out of the community and putting more of it in. We should start beginning to trust more black businesses and putting them on the map instead of putting people who don't look like us on the map. Chinese people coming in here you know, with their restaurants and their little Chinese takeout. You got the Indian man on the corner. You know, with his little, um, you know, corner store. I mean, why can't black people do that? Why? We should be able to do that as well. We should be able to put our own money into our own communities and make it better. Gentrification is doing nothing for black people but moving them out of the neighborhoods that they have been so accustomed to and moving in people who don't look like us to take over. And if you don't think that Africa is having the same problem when it comes to colonization now by the Chinese, you better think again. Perfect example of uh, how some of these brownstones and some how these how some of these um, abandoned houses looked back in the day, in the early 80s and the early 90s when I was a young kid, going in Harlem. Just this is a perfect example. This is not Harlem per se, but this is just how some of those buildings looked. A lot of those people, a lot of people, would be squatters inside these buildings, getting high. Rapes would be taking place in there, drug deals and shit like that. 
Now, my thing is, how come they didn't try to fix these houses up when the black people that lived there were there already? They wait till they want to get the white people in there and then they start fixing up these neighborhoods and making them look better and getting the black people out. Because they don't want the black people to live in these types of neighborhoods with these beautiful buildings and these bustling neighborhoods and businesses. They don't want that. And I see that for what it is now. I didn't know that before, but now I do. And it's sad, but that is the reality. The money just was not coming in because they just simply did not care. But now since their people are coming in, they'll put all their money and resources and efforts into making these places a lot better than they were before. Ladies and gentlemen, in closing in this video, ultimately gentrification does nothing for black people at all. It really doesn't. If black people truly want to see their neighborhoods built from the ground up and in better conditions than what they are, black people need to put their money into their communities it is the only way the only way that we can truly say that we have done something for ourselves that we are progressing progressing for ourselves and that we are becoming more successful and more independent for ourselves stop worrying about what they are doing stop thinking about them being your savior and save yourself i love my people i know there are people in my community that are doing what they have to do there are people, you know, working their asses off, doing the best they can to help people in their communities as they can. There are people that are doing that. Yes, there are. But gentrification is not a good thing. It never has. When gentrification, when you think of that word, as I said earlier, you think of the most negative thing because the negative things against us are happening. There are no positives in this thing. When people are raising the rent purposely and raising the property values of everything around the neighborhood, they know exactly what they're doing. They're getting us out because we can't afford it because they know what kind of jobs we have. Some of us have great jobs, but some of us don't have, you know, the kind of job that we really want to get that pays a lot of money. And between having children, paying for school, paying for food, paying for rent, paying for life and everything else that we got to pay for, all our bills, car payments and stuff like that. How are you going to have money to pay these high rent costs when we don't have the proper jobs? OK, they know what they're doing. They're getting us out. Pretty much buying us out. And you've seen it done in television shows back in the day. They would do the same thing, forcing people out of where they live and making condominiums, making different places here for them to enjoy, not for us to enjoy. They should be doing this for us now while we are here, but they don't. And like I said, we don't need their help. We don't need their help. We shouldn't even want their help. We should be able to help each other because we are hardworking people. We built this fucking country. We should be able to build our own communities. It saddens me to know that we built this country, but when it comes to where we live, we're not even working hard enough to, you know, put effort into making our situation better. Now, we did it in the past. You look at places. I've always talked about this particular example. You look at, uh, what is it, uh, Black Wall Street and how that neighborhood was, how that whole area was. People had everything on their own they depend on each other they helped each other they grew their own food they had their own businesses they had their own boats they were progressing one little lie by a white woman ruined that whole community and the white people didn't like the fact that that community was was you know progressing anyway when it was just black people you know living on their own and doing their own thing but we can do it we can do it ladies and gentlemen we just have to have our minds together and put our efforts together and we can make anything happen. And you know it's true. I know some people don't want to hear this. Some people don't like this type of video. But I'm telling you the fucking truth. I'm on here to tell you the truth. Educate you. And to make you think. And if you don't want to think. Then go to the channels that talk shit about black men and black women. And talk about fighting all day. And being a negative black person. Go ahead and keep on going to those channels. And you know. Putting bullshit into your head. When you should be listening to things that are actually going to help you. And make you think like a smart black person that you are. Anyway, that's all I got to say. I'm out. Like I said, I'm sorry about the shaky camera. It's very hard to hold this and talk at the same time. But in any event, please let me know what you think about this in the comment section. I expect this video to have very low views because YouTube continues to decimate me. They continue to hide me from my own subscribers. My subscribers literally have to come to my channel to see that I have posted a new video and it's terrible. But that's the way it is. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to still be here because I'm not talking hatred. I'm talking empowerment. I'm talking love for my people. And I'm talking progression and progress and unity. And I always will. I love you very much. Take care. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you in the next video.